Hello, my name is Rachel Anise, otherwise known as The Beauty Professor. Welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to be talking about eyeshadows, my top eyeshadows, the most reached for ones. But Joey was nearby and she hasn't been in a video with me in a long time. So she popped on over to say hi. You wanna come say hi? Hi. <laughs> She's five now and is it's like every single day. We're like, how are you five? How did that happen? Because uh, my birthday was in July 19. That's how it works. Anyway, she feels so grown up to us, but she's still a little kid and we wanted to stay that way a long, long and time. I feel like a young teen. You are not a young teen. There's but no I such thing. I feel like one. There's no such because thing. Because I truly am. I, I'm a young teen. You are not. <laughs> <laughs> I love you. Just wanted you to be able to see her really fast. I'm gonna get into the eyeshadows now. All right, high five. Thanks for popping by. <laughs> so I tend to be an eyeshadow minimalist. I find a product I like, I will stick with it for eternity. And as a beauty writer who tests so many eyeshadows and palettes for that matter, I, even with a palette, tend to just use one or two colors in the palette, can you relate? And that means that a lot of the products that I visually love and appreciate the formula of, I just don't use as much. So today, I whittled it down to the things that I actually use. I'm actually packing for another quick trip and I looked, I took inventory of exactly what I brought with me both in my last couple of trips and this trip and it's been consistent. So let me show you these things now. Before I actually get into it, I wanted to show you guys my latest shoe acquisition. It's an anniversary gift, an early one. I usually use my anniversary times for a designer shoe splurge and I've had my eye on these Chloe loafers. I actually put up on Instagram a poll to ask you guys if you thought I should get the black ones or these tan ones. Get the black ones or these tan ones but i settled on the tan i sized up half a size because i like room in a hard leather shoe i don't want to feel restricted or constricted those days are behind me and this was the perfect this is a 38 i'm usually a 37 went to a 38 it's the perfect fit on me it doesn't rub or move around too much these are so like weighty and lovely and classic. I'm wearing them with cutoffs today and just a simple button down per usual, but I also plan to wear them of course with trousers at work, skirts, dresses. I feel like they're so versatile and anytime I'm going to make a significant financial investment in a pair of shoes, I have to feel confident that I'm going to wear them. So recommended, I've been testing them out. I love them, just wanted to show you them quickly. Also, my bag lately, I showed you a bag a couple of weeks ago that it was made by my brother. I use it all the time. It's very chic. Many of you had inquiries about that. I also have been using a lot of this. It's a backpack. I feel like I'm headed back into my early college years with a little backpack, but I love it. It's leather. It's like a chic upgrade on a backpack. It's got pocket on the inside. It has this beautiful front pocket that's actually useful. It's not so small that you can't put anything in it. And it has adjustable straps on the back here. I usually throw it over one shoulder, but I have been getting a lot of questions about this one. I couldn't link to it in a traditional LTK way, so I've been linking back to my brother's site. Hopefully you can see them here, and if you ever have any questions, let me know. But if you've been thinking about a backpack, he makes this in a, for an array of leather colors, but I do love a classic black bag, so this has been my go-to, and I'm using it today. What's great is that the backpack is so roomy and I just slip one of my brother's makeup bags. Lately, this is what I've been using. I also use a cushy one. I have a well insulated one. I use it all depends on the weather and how long I'm gonna be out. But this leather makeup bag is so streamlined and simple, just pure leather on the inside, clean zipper, holds ugh, a ton. So that's what I throw into this backpack to keep things organized. And I will do a quick breakdown of my makeup in the details box if you're curious. I do have a new lip combo on that I've been using a lot of. I'll try to show you that at the end of this video. So let's get right to it. Palette wise, I am such an ardent fan of the Natasha Denona I Need a Nude Palette. This has been, I actually have kept it pretty clean for how much I've used it. I reach for it all the time. It actually just stays on my counter because the formula is so long wearing that I don't really need to touch up throughout the day, but I definitely bring it with me when I'm traveling. So what I love about this is of course the color story. It's easy, it's fresh, it's flattering, but these shimmer shades are abundant and I love a good luminous shadow. There is minimal fallout, no creasing. This one right here is just like camera cannot do it justice, but on the eyes, oh my gosh, the pop that it gives is just next level. Every time I wear it, someone's like, what's on your eyes? 
it's dramatic while still being subtle. If that, it, it, it's a paradox. Okay, so if you're thinking about investing in one palette that you really wanna make sure you're using all the shades, I highly recommend this one. I feel like she just released a mini, so that might be a good entry point. I'll link to that too if you're interested, like a five pan. But man, I've never used so many colors in one palette before in my life. 12 years of beauty writing, plus all the years before that. Next, a, another palette on repeat is this Suku Face and Eye Palette. It's from their 20th anniversary collection. This is shade 101. I've showed it before on social media, like Instagram, my blog. This is a dream palette, I, especially when I'm traveling because I get all the colors I need. Two super shimmery shades, a cream shade, that's a nice base that sets everything in a wash of neutral color, and then this nice matte color to intensify and warm up the eye. So typically I mix these two. Sometimes if I have some extra time, I'll buff this one in, and I always use this cream shade as my first step because it really keeps things in place. It is beautiful. And I love how compact this is as well. Just an elegant design. This is a blush shade, by the way, and it's subtle. It's kind of like a mixture of bronzer and blush with a slightly satin finish, nothing too radiant. So it's really easy to just touch up the cheeks with, and I envision it looking good on a variety of skin tones. So that is my second eye choice for you guys, and also incidentally includes a cheek. Next is this Clay de Peau eyeshadow. This is in the shade 7. And I have swatches of all of the shades on Beauty Professor. I will link to it if you're curious. The, the color stories that Benjamin Pucky released with Clay de Peau earlier this fall are so stunning, very wearable, yet unique. And this one is probably my most reached for, though I have other favorites in the line as well. One I think is Caviar Pearls. It's a little bit pinker. This is a true neutral, though this shade is more of a pinky taupe situation. Okay, so down here at the bottom, you have a creamy primer. And that's kind of a little known fact that I learned from Benjamin. You start with this bottom shade all over the eyes and it's a, it's got enough tack to hold everything else on. And it also is a really pretty wash of luminosity. So you can also use it to the high points of your face like a highlighter if you're in a hurry. Great hack, beautiful formulation. And this is a different formula than these three shades over here. Then we have a, a stunning, like I said, pinky taupe satin finish, a pretty, true kind of sable tan tone and then this rich brown meets aubergine that you can use in the crease or to smoke things out. Benjamin did a really elaborate eye look on me with these shades and I mean something I probably will never be able to replicate but absolutely loved, very dramatic while still being neutral and wearable for daytime. I tend to just kind of go in with the primer and then a mixture of these two and then I'll take a tiny brush with this along my lower lash line if I have time. But if you're looking for one shade from this whole launch, I highly recommend shade seven here and you'll be glad you have it, you'll use it. I feel like Joey might've gotten into this palette while I was preparing things because there's a lot of color overlap going on and I don't do that. So, so be it, it can be corrected. But this is the new Suku palette for winter. This is in the shade 129 and it has three radiant shades and one kind of satin matte brown tone. This is like ultra pearly. We've got this very light champagne pink and then a little bit deeper champagne taupe pink. I have that on my eyes today. So that's what I came into this video wearing was a combination of these shades and I apply them with my fingertips. So I'm pretty low maintenance about it most of the time. These shades glide on, resist creasing. I'm remiss to pick a favorite Suku quad because I have so many and I have things that I love about each of the ones that I use a lot. But this one quickly made it into my bag and that doesn't always happen. So, and onto my eyes. So I will say it, for limited edition winter, it's well worth the pursuit. There are two eyeshadow quads launched for this collection. This is the one that I chose and I'm so happy that I did. While on the subject of Suku and limited edition, I wanna show you my already well loved, this is certainly not pristine looking, Tone Touch eyeshadow in shade 114. This is a cream shade and it is a mixture of gold, tan, and pink. It almost has a subtle duochrome finish. I gasped when I saw it because I was like, this is a shade I dream about. Once this formula, which is pretty thin for a cream set, it does not budge or crease, which is really nice. You can use it as a base. 
I've been just slapping it onto my eyes in the morning before going to work and it stays on all day. The shade looks pretty rudimentary in the pan, but once you get close, once you swatch it, you will see the magic, the dimension, and just the specialness of this tone. So run, don't walk. I hope they make this a uh, part of the permanent collection because I feel like it's just one of those perennial shades that would look good on everyone and the formula cannot be beat. All right, I want to also, and this is not a palette, but it is, I, I treat it like when, you know, I've told you I like that one and done eyeshadow situation. I've talked about this shade many times over, so I would be remiss not to mention it now for what I reach for for eyes, and that is this Sisley Paris Fido Eye Twist in the shade Fawn, which on my slightly tan hand right now does not look like a lot of color, but on the eyes, you get a rich wash of coppery, golden, slightly pink, bronze, all the colors that I love. And it's thin, it is completely water resistant, I dare say waterproof. Once it's on your eyes, it does not go anywhere. This formula itself is just so indelible and lovely. You have a couple of seconds of, of work time to kind of get it where you want it. I usually use my fingers and then go over with a brush. But once you do that, you are set for the day. And it's very easy when I'm in a rush, which is often. I'm actually almost out of this one. I have a couple more twists left and then this bowl is finished, but I've been using it nonstop since its launch much earlier this year. So I hope I can pick up a new one soon. Back in the makeup bag, it goes, cause it's always there. And then speaking of always there, but, no, but not there any longer, this is the Tom Ford Cream Color Eyeshadow Duo in Golden Peach. How many times have I talked about this? I cannot count, <laughs> so many. Um, you have, oh, at the bottom here, you have this cream peach shade that just blends like a dream, really light and pretty. And on the top, you have a powder that is golden, hence the golden peach, and it sets everything with massive luminosity. Now, I stocked up on these when the shade was discontinued last year. Many of you reached out to me and said, I think the shade is going away, what do you know, what do you know? And the, the bottom line is, it went away. And that is so sad because so many people liked it. But I still have a couple backups and I use it because that's it's such an easy, effortless color that wears long all day. I, I'm not sharing it because you can go find it because you probably can't unless it's in the resale market. But I am excited to say that I am working with a brand right now to perhaps bring back a color that is very, very similar to this in inspiration and feeling. So more on that soon. Next month, I can talk more about it, but I'm very hopeful that we get to a place that will let us continue to live out our golden peach dreams to be continued. I covered my eyeshadows, my top eyeshadows and eyeshadow palettes. One final product that's not an eye palette per se, but I've used it that way and it's been in my makeup bag nonstop and it's also on my face right now, is this Orlan bronzer. It is a four shade situation, light, medium, deep, and then a pink. I have used all four on my eyes and it's such a pretty wash of satin matte color, but it's on my face all the time. I can't stop using this, you guys. Orlan is such a beautiful brand. I'm gonna be doing a, a, a focused kind of deep dive on some of their key, new skincare and skincare favorites of mine because I've used the line since the beginning of Beauty Professor 11 years ago. But this has just been a permanent member of my makeup bag. I've been using it. Many of you have told me you picked it up and that you love it so much as well. It's just so easy. The powders blend like a dream. And like I said, when I need to get my whole face ready quickly, I go in with these three on my cheeks, primers of my face to sculpt this on the apples of my cheeks. And then I can just take a mixture of like this and this or this and this and pop it onto my eyes for some depth and a, a nice monochromatic kind of pulled together look. Bronzer on the eyelids as a hack, it's not revolutionary, but it's still genius and I highly recommend it when you're in a hurry. So this palette is a must and so compact. It even comes in a little case that I've managed to keep it in. Not normally something I'm able to achieve, but I have kept it this way. A couple more thoughts for eyes because there's a few things going on that I reach for as well that aren't eyeshadow, but I thought I'd mention them here since the list is pretty tight. So first things first, for brows, I use the Make Infinite Hold Sculpting Brow Gel in Cool Brown. 
people lately have been asking me all the time, like, what's on your brows? Because they look really natural, but they look pulled together. And that's the best compliment, right? You don't want someone saying, like, what color are you wearing on your brows? Once you're there, it's become too conspicuous. You want it to look natural. I have a dark ash, ash brown brow. And so I need a color that works with that. This is a universal brown, so it really goes with most brow colors. And they also have a clear version. So you have that as an option too, but this really holds. Once I put it on, I just brush it through, brush it upward, clean up the edges, and I'm done. It gives color, it gives dimension, it gives fullness, and such a feathery hold that doesn't budge. Even when my face gets wet, I feel like my brows stay in place. Carrie Barber killed it with this formulation. It's all I've been using, and it's in this very weighty luxe red tube. I can find it in my makeup bag like that. Another brow product that I keep with me just in case is the Suku Brow Liquid Pen in shade 02. I've been using it for like seven or eight years. Now, my brows are fairly full, but I do get some sparse sections from time to time. And sometimes that even happens if you put your brow gel on too quickly, because then you might like pull the hairs in a way and it exposes some skin. So if I want to fill anything in, I just use this pen really quick after the brow gel to give a little more depth and dimension. It's whisper soft. This is not a heavy pen. Look at it. It's like a watercolor, but it has indelible ink once it sets. So I just get in there, brush through any sparse areas if I have the time and inclination, and I'm good to go. I just feel like it's one of those things my makeup bag always needs, and it's small, so I can leave it in there. Never need sharpening because it's a liquid. I wanna show you two liners today, both of which are on my eyes. I did a combo. First, I did a pass with this Lisa Eldridge Seamless Glide Eyeliner, and the name could not be more apropos. It is a creamy, for, like no pressure whatsoever. This is in a green tone called Night Forest. She sent me a few shades to try. I love Lisa's vision for beauty. It's just so elegant and sophisticated. I feel like her products are just so magnificently executed. So I'm always honored to try her products. I have some other shades to swatch for you guys and share soon. Life has just been wild lately, so I'm getting through it. But this shade, I immediately started putting on my waterline and it's velvety smooth, doesn't tug, stays in place. And I think it's just a nice kind of pop of color without being obvious because look how deep it is. This formulation is sublime. And then I also wanna show you the Christian Audette Panther liner. It is a pure black, like so black, jet black, and so long lasting, it can wear for up to 24 hours. So what I do sometimes is because my eyes water on the inside here, thanks allergies and contact lenses and whatever else is in the air, I like to put something super waterproof close to here because I'm always wiping my eyes. I, I know we shouldn't, but I do it. So I just go right here with the black and it'll stay in place. You can also, of course, get a lot more artful and skillful cat eye, wing dye with this because once you put it on, like, look at this. It's not going anywhere. I'm pressing hard, you guys. It's not going anywhere. I'm gonna actually have to get a makeup wipe to take it off. But I go right in here. And if you have watery eyes like me and you just want something to make sure that your eyeliner stays in that waterline all day, this is excellent for that. Plus you just get magnificent black impact. So a beautiful product from Christian Audette. Finally, my lip mix today, three products and they are all different brands. So the first is the Jones Road Lip Pencil in the shade Nudist, Nudist. And it looks like this. Well, this is a very creamy, neutral, deep neutral nude. I think it will look good on everyone. I sat in on a Zoom with Bobbi Brown last week as she was talking about some of her recent launches. The pencils were new too and she was talking about the fact that when she shows the colors that she wanted them to look good on everyone. They would be the colors that you would reach for rather than just the colors you imagine yourself wearing. And that's my philosophy with makeup all the time. There's con conceptual makeup and then there's what you actually use. And I tend to talk about what you actually use. So I use a lot of this nudist shade. I have it on right now. It really lets you kind of cheat the lip line without looking too obvious. And I just kind of go in like that. That's what I do. Then I went in with a light color lipstick. This is a Christian Dior Forever lipstick. All the Dior lipsticks were on sale at Nordstrom when I was there last week, 20% off, so I couldn't help myself. It's a brand new formulation, however, and 
it looks like this. It's almost like a little bit of a gray taupe lip and that's not my normal nude. I like something with a little more pinky flesh tone, but I think it's kind of interesting and chic. So I go in with this and it's very long lasting, but not dry. It's thin, it's lightweight. I put that on next over the darker liner and then I'm topping it with this Suku Treatment Wrapping Lip. I love this formulation. This is in the shade 105 which is a neutral pink with some very subtle luminosity. Most of the treatment wrapping lips do not have any version of sparkle and it's really hard for it to pick up here. But if you're in the sunlight, you can see just a hint of light reflecting particles. You can't feel them, but you can see them. And then I put that along here for some shine and just to make your lips look really plump and juicy. This is limited edition, but I feel like if they made this color a part of the permanent lineup in this formula, it would just continue selling because it's got just enough pigment for payoff, but it's easy and light and I think it would look great on everyone. So I am, this is in my purse now. Love it so much. That is this lip mix here. All right, I need to head out, clean up, head out, but I hope you enjoyed this discussion. I am thrilled to have been able to share some of these top products with you before I leave. I also have some new launches to discuss with you coming up and that will just be a little bit longer video when I have a little more time to coordinate next week. So I can't wait to share that with you. I have consistent newness on my Instagram page daily and thank you for all your support there. And I also have newness on Beauty Professor as much as humanly possible. Plus it's just like this 12 year landscape of beauty discussion. So I feel like it has a very evergreen quality no matter what. Please let me know what you think about these eyeshadow picks. I hope they speak to you. They give you some insight and inspiration. And also uh, let me know if you're using any of these. Finally, I'm treating the month of October as a giveaway month. I'm, I'm, I want to give some stuff back to my followers. I have a lot here and I don't ever sell it and I pass it on, but I would love to do some really dedicated giveaways to my beauty professor community. So I'll be running those on Instagram. I'm starting right now with a makeup and skincare combo that I'm packing into this cute bag and I'll be sending that out to the winner that's chosen at random once the date gets here. Then I'll also be running another makeup only giveaway and another skincare only giveaway. And it's just a way for me, like I said, to show you how grateful I am for you guys and to make sure I'm giving back and spreading the beauty because I'm grateful to get to try so much here. As, as always, Thank you so much for being here. I have so much new content coming to you soon. In the meanwhile, don't forget to visit me at Beauty Professor, which can be found at beautyprofessor.com. Take care.